because we're on a series called Plug Into the Power of What? Prayer. That's exactly right. Someone remind me one more time. What is prayer? Prayer is talking to God. Everyone say prayer is talking to God. Prayer is talking to God. So we're on part three. Everyone say three. Everyone look at your neighbor and say tres. That's three in Spanish. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we're on part three, so let's do a quick recap. We're going over the Lord's prayer. That's right, because we're talking about prayer, right? So the first part was our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So you guys help me out. What did that word hallowed mean again? holy and set apart. That's exactly right. So when Jesus went off to pray, as much as times as he went to pray, his disciples saw him come back one day and said, hey, Lord, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, okay, this is how it goes. Our Father who are, so he taught them, and we learned that God is our Father, and we are his children, just like that song just got done singing. He's a good, good Father, and we get to talk to him any time we want to. And so our Bible story, which we're going to continue today, do you guys remember what it was about? It was about a woman. Her name started with an H. Hannah, did you know you can actually spell Hannah forward and backwards the same way? That's so crazy. Just like Anna. That's, that's exactly right. Just like Anna. So this lady named Hannah, everyone say Hannah. Hannah. Do you guys remember what she did? Do you guys remember what her heart wanted so badly? A son. She wanted a son so badly. So she went to the temple, or in this case we can call it a church. She went to the church to pray. And she got down on her knees and she started praying. And her lips were moving, the Bible says, but nothing was coming out of her lips. And so the priest thought she was a little cray-cray and called her out on it and said, You are crazy, girl. What is going on? She goes, No, no, no. I'm crying out to God because my heart is so desperate for a son. And do you know what happened? Do you think God heard her? Yeah. He heard her, even though no words were coming out. She was praying like this. Do you think God can hear me? Yes. Do you think God can hear me even if I do this? Yeah, he can because he created you. He created your mouth. He created your mind. He knows exactly what you're thinking. And so God heard Hannah's cry, and he gave her a son just like she wanted. But she also promised God something. Anybody remember what that promise was? That she would devote her son to God. So she gave birth to a son, called him Samuel, which means God heard me. That's exactly right. God heard me. And when he was of age, he gave him, she gave him back to the priest at the temple to live and learn what it is to be a priest. Crazy. We're going to be picking up on that story here in a little bit. But here is our PowerPoint today. You guys say this with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Prayer makes a difference. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Prayer changes things. Do you think Hannah would have been blessed with a son if she never would have prayed for him? Maybe not. Maybe not. But because that was the desire of her heart, and God is a good, good father, he gave her the desires of her heart. So prayer does make a difference. If you're having a hard time at school, you can pray and ask God for help. Do you think he's going to help you? Yeah, because he is a good, good father. You know, for me personally, sometimes I get frustrated too easily. I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes something happens, and I'm like, ugh, why does it have to happen like this? I'm having to work on that, and I'm having to ask God to help me. And prayer does make a difference because when I talk to God, it makes me feel better. I mean, I start feeling his presence in my heart, and I start feeling him come alive in me more, and I start remembering his word and what it says about not being angry so quickly. So it's a good thing. Prayer does make a difference. And here's your your other PowerPoint today. It says, I can pray for God to meet the needs of others. Did you know that when you pray, say, for example, you're scared because you're scared of the dark. It's okay if you are because I was when I was a kid. And you pray and you ask God to help meet that need. God, I'm scared. Comfort me. God's going to do it. But you know what else prayer can be used for? Praying for other people's needs. You know, what if you know of a friend at school who's being bullied all the time? You can pray and ask God to give that bully a tender heart, not to, not to be a bully anymore. Or you can pray for your friend who is being bullied that they won't be bullied anymore. And that can change things as well. And we're actually going to talk about a Bible story today of Samuel. When he's older, he prayed and talked with God to help meet the needs of of other people, not his needs. That's pretty cool because God loves it when he hears when he hears that you guys are praying for him. So, I think I saw earlier that a box was delivered for me 
but I'm not exactly sure what it was. So Miss Joy is going to bring it up here for me because the instructions were that whatever's in the box, I get to keep. But I don't know what's in this box, and so I'm kind of freaked out a little bit about it. And I told Miss Joy to hold it for me until, until we get there. Is it heavy? Are you? What? It's not heavy. But I'm kind of nervous because I have no idea what's in here. So I need a brave, brave volunteer. Brave volunteer. I mean, you've got to be. Sarah, your hand went up first, so come on up here. You guys get up for Sarah because she's really brave. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah, this box is pretty much as big as you, okay? So don't open it yet. Just hold the bottom of it. You got to hold the bottom, okay? Yeah, just like that. Let's face this way a little bit. Oof. Okay, so here's the deal. The reason why you're holding it, Sarah, is because if something scary is in here, I'm running for that door right over there, and you can hold the box. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yeah? She's really contemplating this right now. Do you want someone else to do this? No? You got, ah, she is brave. Okay. So the instruction said that whatever's in this box, I get to keep. Yeah, but what's in it? Shake it, shake it just a little bit. No, don't open it yet. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> what if it was a bomb? That'd be bad. Don't say bomb. Okay, wait, wait, don't shake it too much. What if it's alive? Okay, I hold the bottom because I'm going to peek inside. But I'm serious. If it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, hold the bottom. Don't, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Ah! Oh, are you guys wanting to know what's in this box? Okay, wait, 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 before I, okay, we're good. We're good. It's not, it's not alive, and it's not, but it scared me. Okay, someone give me a show of hands. What do you think's in the box? A toy? Water? A lobster? I wish. I love lobster. Stinky socks? If it's stinky socks, Sarah, I'm giving it to you. Nothing? All right, all right, here we go. I'm going to open it. 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 What do we got? We got paper. Everyone say paper. No, 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 but for real, thank you, Sarah. Thank you for all of your wonderful help. High five, because you were braver than me, for real. Did you, did, hey, Sarah, did I scare you when I screamed? Because I think I scared myself. I think I peed just a little bit. All right, so here we go. All right, all right, okay. Let's see what these papers are, because they're not blank. Let's see what it is. Oh, I get to cash this sucker in, and I get a radio, brand new radio. Who wants a radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. So I'm going to put it right here really quick because there's more papers in here. Let's see what else I get. I get to keep these things. That's so cool. I get to, who gave this to me? This is really cool. All right, let's see here. Oh, my God. No way. I get my own billboard? Awesome. It says iPad right now. Does that mean I get an iPad also? <laughs> that would be Awesome. Gosh, what am I going to do with the billboard? Maybe my face could go on it. Like that. Oh, the pink pants and the blue shoes. Dude, I'd be styling, man. All right, let's see what else we got. So I get a radio and a billboard. Wait, an invitation to be on the nightly news? Awesome! Cool! I'm a little nervous. Sarah, you can take that spot for me because I'm a little scared to go on national TV. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay, hold on. Oh, I get my own newspaper. I don't want a newspaper, though. It says, it says, extra, extra, read all about it. Chris Meek is awesome. No, it says, it says, it says bed bugs invade. Hopefully there's no bed bugs. I don't want bed bugs. Ah, oh, I get brand new walkie-talkies. Awesome! Okay, all right, all right. I'm a little too excited right now. Awesome. Can anyone tell me, because I think, I mean, what do you use walkie-talkies for? Secret talking. To talk with other people, right? What do you use, what do you use a newspaper for? To read what's happening. What, what, is, the, what is the breaking news for? What is a news channel for? To tell people, okay, hold on, wait. What is a billboard for? To advertise and tell people, man, gosh, I get, what is radio for? For music and to listen to other, there's a, wait, to talk to, to, what is, what is the most common thing about all of these right now, Evan? To tell people, did you guys know, I mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff, but did you know that all of these have in common with talking to people and telling people? I mean, the radio, 
the, the walkie-talkies, the news, the billboard, it's all, a, it's all a way to communicate with somebody. Did you know that prayer is kind of like that? He what, huh? No, no, I, I didn't make the box, actually. I don't, no, I, I get to keep all of that stuff. I don't know, who, I'm going to go talk with the supervisor afterwards because I think I get to keep that stuff, but that's kind of how prayer is. Here's something that you might not have known what's in the Bible, okay, because this works perfectly for my lesson today. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 says that God listens and hears us when we talk to him, and he answers that's awesome. He loves it even more when we get to pray and talk to him about the needs of others. How many of you guys want to be God's helper? Yeah, me too. And you know how we can help God? is just by obeying him. And when someone is in prayer needs and they need you to lift them up in prayer, we get to pray and ask God to help them. So before we go any further, and we're about to go over our memory verse for today, I want you guys to slap your hands together because I want to pray over us right now. Bow your eyes and close your head. Let me pray over you guys. Dear Lord, God, Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this day, and I pray that you would show everyone in our class this morning someone that they can help this week, rather it's in their family or rather it's at school. Show them someone that they can help this week, and Lord, if you would like to help them meet that need, I pray that you would use them and show them just how to do that. In the name of Jesus, and everybody says, amen. All right, who are my two kid leaders this morning? Yeah, Libby, come here really quick, because I want to see how good you are at something really quick. And Gabe, right here, perfect, step right there. Awesome. All right, here's our memory verse for today. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay, we're still in the Lord's Prayer. So the first part was, you guys can say it with me if you know it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. And then here's the next part. It says, give us this day our daily bread. What does that mean? What do, what do you think this verse means? Somebody, somebody help me out. Elizabeth. They're asking God to give them food. They're trusting. Everyone say trust. They're trusting that God is going to meet their needs every single day. How many of you guys like to eat food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you guys like pizza? Yeah, because that's a type of bread. You can always say, Lord, it's, it's bread. It's bread, Lord. Okay? So God knows that we need to eat. Everyone say, thank you, Jesus. God knows that we can't live without food. Our bodies would ultimately fail and die. We need food. How many of you guys know that we need water in order to survive? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need water and food. You're right, Elizabeth. We need water more than food for our bodies to survive. And so this part of the Lord's Prayer is saying, Lord, I trust you to meet my everyday needs. Why don't you guys say that? Lord, I trust you to meet my everyday needs. So on the count of three, it's not a very long verse. So if you already know it, close your eyes and try to say it in memory. So here we go. On the count of three, you guys read this or say this with me because then I'm going to have my two leaders. They're gonna, I'm going to scramble those words, and they got to put them together as fast as they can. So on the count of three, you guys got to say this so that they'll know exactly what it is. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Our daily bread. Matthew 6, 11. Okay, I'm going to take it off just to make sure you guys know what's up. What are these? Do you guys know what these are? They're what? Paper bags. What do you use paper bags for normally? To hold things, but I mean, like, what do you normally use them for? Lunch. Yeah, like your sandwiches and stuff, because, you know, give us a stay our daily bread. You got bread sandwiches, bread bags. How many of you guys have ever used one of these for lunch before? Come on, be for real. I know you guys got cool, cool, cool lunch boxes now. I mean, it <laughs> must be old. Okay, so on the count of three, Libby and Gabe, I'm going to throw these up, and you guys have to put them together in order on the floor as fast as you can. Do you guys think they can do that in time? Like, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to see. Yeah, you know what? Who's got a timer on them? Anybody? Anybody? Anybody got a timer? Yeah? Anybody? 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 Jay, you got this, okay? I, my phone's off. All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to throw these up, and y'all have to, you know what? I don't, want, I don't want you guys to run into this, so I'm going to move this really quick. I'm going to throw these up, and you guys can actually help them by yelling out the order of the memory verse. But I moved it. It's not on the screen anymore, so you don't know what it is, do you? Or do you? Do you? Or do you? Yeah? Okay. So on the count of three, I mean, it's not, it's like seven paper lunch bags. Here we go. Let's see if they can do it in 40 seconds. Not even a minute. Can y'all do that? 40, or do y'all want a minute? Let's do, let's do a minute. Let's do a minute, just in case. All right. Now, if I throw these up and they land near you, don't touch them. 
Okay? Hands off because they've got to grab them. I have no idea where they're going to go. Are you ready? Mr. J, are you ready? Okay, on the count of three. You got some music to also go with this because I'm kind of scared right now. All right, on the count of three. Wait, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, all right, on the count of three. One, two. But, I mean, you got to be really ready. Are you ready? Are you nervous? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Help them out. Tell them what it is. You guys got to do it. Yeah. That's right. Right here. You. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Libby, you got to go faster. Hurry, hurry. Put them together. You guys help them out. What is it? You almost got it. Keep going. Give us this day our daily bread. Matthew 6, 11, they're done. Yeah! All right, Jay, how long was that? 30 seconds. Woo! All right, you guys pick them up. Hand them to me really, really quick because I'm going to ask for one more boy and girl leader to try to do this in less than 30 seconds. Okay, so here we go. I want Libby to pick a new girl, and I want Gabe, I want you to pick a new boy. All right, anyone, because it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Everyone say it's going to be good. All right, here we go. All right, we got Adelaide. She's here. Oh, we got Miles. All right, so do you guys think you all can beat 30 seconds of putting together this short memory verse? Seriously, 30 seconds is a lot. All right, do you guys know the verse again? Do you guys know the verse? Do you all know it? Yeah? All right, on the count of three. Mr. J, you ready? All right, here we go. Y'all count it off with me. Uh, but you got to be ready because 30 seconds, though. I don't even know if I can beat 30 seconds. Are you ready? All right, y'all count it off. Here we go. Oh, I was supposed to throw them. Let's do it again. All right, go, 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 go. Hands off, hands off. Let them do it. Tell them what it is. Help them out. There we go. You're getting it. Give us this day bread. Oh, you got helpers. Give us this day our daily bread. That one, Miles. And done. Yes. Whoa. All right. Mr. J, how we doing? What? 25 seconds. Okay. I think we should do this one more time. I think we can beat this. All right, so I'm going to have you pick a new boy, and Adelaide, you pick a new girl. Because we went from 30 seconds to 25 seconds. I'm wondering if someone can do 20 seconds. Oh, brother and sister. Oh, snap. Destiny, over here for me. Representing the girls. Isaac, you're right here. You're good. You're good. All right. Okay. Can you all do this in 20 seconds? 20 seconds. Can you do it in 20 seconds? You ready? Do you guys think they can do this in 20 seconds? All right. But y'all have to help them out. You guys have to shout out the verse for them because sometimes when you get all these words mixed up, you don't know what they say. So here we go. One. Go. Oh, what? Here we go. Oh, you guys are good helpers. Keep going. Give us this day our daily bread and done. Done. What is it? What do we got? 62 seconds. Oh, my gosh. Woo. You guys are killing. Wow. Oh, my gosh. A new record. 16 seconds. Golly. Woo. Do you guys feel good about yourselves? All right, you guys, y'all should know this by now. So on the count of three, you guys say this with me together. What is the memory verse? On the count of three, one, two, three. Give us this day our daily bread. Matthew 6, 11. Wow. Whew, six, whew, I'm, it's hot in here now. Wow, you guys are awesome. Okay, we're going to go over. Everyone say it one more time. Prayer makes a difference. Say it one more time. Prayer makes a difference. Let's do it again and say, prayer. prayer. Look at your neighbor and say, prayer makes a difference. <laughs> Why do you guys talk like that? It's so weird. Okay, anyway, so here we go. Today's Bible story. <clears throat> so we talked about Hannah 
two weeks ago, because we're on part three of plug into a power prayer. Hannah prayed to God. Her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. But God heard her, gave her a son, called him Samuel. You guys remember Samuel? Mr. Ben playing Samuel, and y'all played God last time. You guys remember that? Because he was here, and he was sleeping. And what, what happened in the Bible story? Samuel heard who call his name? God, but he thought it was Eli. He thought it, was, he thought it was the priest Eli, so three different times. And then Eli finally said, no, 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 no. I'm not calling you. Quit waking me up. You're disturbing my beauty sleep. Because if God calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Do you guys remember what he actually told Samuel when Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant's listening? That's exactly what happened. Eli's sons were the next one to be the priest of the temple. And God told Samuel that, mm, nope, his sons are bad. They're doing some really bad things. So they're not going to be the next one in line. And Samuel had to tell Eli that the next morning. They're sitting at the breakfast table. They're having, uh, you know, honey nut Cheerios or whatever together. And all of a sudden, he was like, oh, hey, you know, I thought it was a dream last night, Samuel, but you actually woke me up three times. I realized it wasn't a dream. And I told you that it was God telling you something. What did he say? And Samuel was like, all of a sudden, you could hear the crickets in the background. And he's like, well, um, God said that your sons are evil. And gonna... He's like, what? He's like, God said that your sons are evil. And gonna... No, I'm serious. Uh, he, he, he told Eli, he's like, okay, God said that your sons are evil and they're not going to be the next priest in line for the temple. And Eli said, okay, that's what God said. So we're going to pick up our story right from here. You guys ready? But I need your help again telling today's story. Anytime you hear me say the word king, I want you guys to do a big fist pump and go, long live the king. Can you guys do that? Long live the king. So let's practice this. In castles, you've got your knights in shining armor. Some of them are rusty. That's why they can't move. They're always standing there guard. They can't move at all, but you can push them over. So you got knights, you got horses, and, and you got horse poo because you know horses poo, okay? You've got, you've got your queens, your princesses, your princes, and then you got your kings, and yeah, see, I thought, thought I had you on that one, but I didn't. So here we go. Anytime I say the word king, yeah, but you guys got to shout it out louder than that. Like, you guys really want a king. You guys are doing good. All right, here we go. <clears throat> and now, today's Bible story. All right, here we go. Samuel served God faithfully as he grew up. He even became a prophet, which we talked about last Sunday, is just a messenger of God. When God tells you something to tell somebody, yeah, go tell them, even if it's good, even if it's bad. So after Eli the priest died, everyone say he died. Yep, he died. Samuel became the spiritual leader for the entire country of Israel. Okay? Now, as Samuel grew older, the people of Israel decided that they wanted something they had never had. They wanted a king. You guys are good. Long live the king. All right. So Samuel went to God in prayer about their request. Remember, we're talking about praying for the needs of others. Okay? So Samuel went to God to pray for their request. And God said, yes, they could have what they were asking for. They could have their king. Yeah, you guys got to get more excited about that, okay? So, even though God said yes, they would one day regret asking for a king. Yeah, see, I thought I had you on that one, but no, I didn't. Okay, so, one day, the Lord told Samuel, about this time tomorrow, Samuel, <clears throat> I will send you a man, and he will be from the family of Benjamin. He's like, okay, cool. All right, and God said, you must appoint him as the leader for my people of Israel. So the next day, Samuel met a guy named Saul, the one God had chosen. The Bible says that he was the tallest man around. So who's the tallest in here besides Mr. Chris? Because I know Mr. Chris is pretty tall. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, oh, centimeter taller. But I need, but I need a dude. But I need a dude. Saul's a dude. So who's the tallest dude in here? Ethan? Ethan, you're up, dude. You are Saul. Everyone say, what's that, Saul? All right, so you ready to be king, dude? Okay. Whew. I thought for a minute I lost you guys there for a minute. Wow. Okay, so here he is. He's tall. How tall are you? He's six feet. Because I'm six feet. Oh, okay, good. But you're still tall because the Bible says that Saul was the tallest boy present. And so Samuel took some olive oil or some anointing oil, yeah, 
took some anointing oil, okay? And do you guys know what they did in do you guys know what they did in the Bible? The anointing oil was like syrup sort of. It was like thick and creamy and kind of sticky, but it smelled really good. And it was it was just it was just a part of God's presence. It was just a it was just a thing to where the prophets would go over and they do you want me to forward over his head because I don't want to forward his head. And they say, All right, well no, come here, you're tall, you're awesome, you're the next king. Yeah. Because the people of Israel wanted a king. So Samuel had to anoint Saul, the king of Are you ready? You guys are paying so close attention. And so he decided to, oh, my gosh, it's a good thing that was water. It's a good thing that was water. Because I thought that was anointing oil for a minute. That's what it says. It says anointing oil. You ready? Open your mouth. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So everyone say, thank you, Saul. All right, Saul, you can go back to your chair. Okay. So for a couple of years, the Bible says that Saul was a good king. Yeah, you, you guys are getting a little rusty here. All right, so Saul was a good king. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he followed the Lord very wisely. But, everyone say but. There's always a but in the story. I don't know why. But, then Saul quit listening to Samuel's advice and began disobeying God. Everyone go, <gasps> oh my gosh, you never want to do that, okay? Then, the Lord sent Samuel to tell Saul this message. Remember, he was a prophet. He was a messenger. So he goes up to Saul and he says, <clears throat> Since you have disobeyed God's command, he rejects you as king. Yeah, you guys are good. Once again, it was time for Samuel to pray and ask what the need of Israel was from God. Remember, we're talking about praying for the needs of others. So Samuel again prayed to God to help find what was right for the king of Israel. Yeah, you guys are getting a little rusty again. Y'all y'all don't want a king anymore. Y'all are young like king. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> so Samuel was looking. God sent Samuel to a home on a farm. You guys probably have heard this part of the story before. Okay? So God sent Samuel to a home of a man named Jesse. Everyone say Jesse. God said that there was a son there of Jesse that he had selected to become the next. What if I said queen? Okay, the next king. Yeah, you guys are on board. So Samuel arrived on his little donkey. Okay, he got there, and then all of a sudden, there he was. There he was. It was so beautiful. He heard the angels of heaven singing. You guys help me out with that. Oh. There he was. He stood five foot six, blonde hair, blue eyes, and he was super muscular. And Samuel said, Aha! This is the one God has chosen. And he walked right by him, and you know what God said? Mm, nope. Okay. So Samuel kept going through all the sons of Jesse, and each time he thought, Surely this one is it. I mean, he's got nice teeth. His breath smells pretty decent. And God's like, no. Nope. He's like, okay. So he goes to the next one. He's a little bit more fatter. And he was like, this one's got good food to eat, so maybe he's the next king. Well, I'm the king. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm making that part up. But anyway, the Bible does say that Samuel went to each and every son of Jesse. And each time he thought that that one was the next one, I didn't say king yet. Yeah, see, you guys, yeah, y'all are paying attention. Okay. But God said no. So finally Samuel said, hey, Jesse. Um, none of your sons are what God said. Do you have another son? He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's one. He's a shepherd boy, and he's keeping, flo he's keeping watch over our flocks, and he's out in the field. I can go get him for you. And he's like, yeah, because not, we're not sitting down. We're not eating. We're not doing anything. We're standing right here until he gets here. So who's the shortest boy in here? Anybody? Anybody? Isaac? Yeah? I think you are, dude. Cause you, yeah, yeah. But don't be shy, dude. You're going to grow really, really tall soon, okay? So here he is. Do you guys remember his name? No, I mean the, the, the boy in the story. David. It was David. And so David came and he smelled like sheep. He smelled like sheep poo. He looked like a sheep because he had wool all over him. And he had a shepherd's staff. And he was so little. He was so cute. But you know what God said to Samuel? He said, that's him. That's the next king. Yeah. 
And so Samuel said, yes, Lord, and anointed him with oil. Oh, good. Okay, good. Man, it's a good thing that was not anointed. Oh, but I'm going to anoint all you guys with oil a little bit. So there you go. Oh, okay, good. All right. Everyone's anointed. Everyone's anointed. Oh, my gosh. All right, everyone, sit down really quick. Because David was the next king. Yeah, David was the next king. I said David was the next king. Yeah, you're good, man, because. But you want to know something special about this story really quick? You guys give me five. My hands are free. I don't have any more anointing oil, so you guys, you guys stay till. Okay, so, so even, though, even though Samuel anointed David to be the next king, do you think all of a sudden David went to go live in the palace? Nope. David immediately went back to work with the sheep. And that is a great lesson for us to learn that when God promises us something, and man, I'm talking to myself right now, when God promises you something, sometimes it might not happen as fast as we want it to happen. We have to be faithful and do exactly what God has called us to do so that in the proper time, the promise of the Lord will come to fruition. And so later on, when David got older, he got to work in the palace under Saul, and then he became king. Yeah. All right, you guys, sit back. The lights are going off. Thank you so much, Mr. David. And here's today's life story for you guys. Can y'all cut the lights for me? And now, today's life story. The evil Dr. Diabolico is in his secret lab cooking up his latest batch of trouble for Earthman and the good people of Letzerville. This time, Dr. D is hunched over his computer, pounding feverishly at the keyboard. That big ugly grin on his face tells us that he's come up with the most cruel invention ever. Finally, the world's most deadly computer virus is ready. No one will be able to stop the new Hackintosh 3000, thought the evil doctor. This new program would give Dr. Diabolico the ability to invade every computer system in the city and do whatever he wanted with it. Obviously, the townspeople were in for some trouble. Immediately, Dr. D began hacking into the computer systems at the Letzerville Sky Tower Hotel. He shut down all the power at the hotel. He caused the fountains in the lobby to overflow and flood the building. He was even able to freeze the controls of the air conditioner so that it became so cold in the building that people thought it was winter outside. Dr. Diabolico was having a really nasty good time. But that wasn't the only trick he had up his sleeve. He then sent a coded message to Earthman, telling him that his hero-sized help was needed at the hotel. As Earthman and Roger arrived on the scene, they couldn't believe what was happening. Earthman sprang into action and began rescuing people from elevators that were stuck and rooms where the doors were frozen shut. He even rescued a little old lady whose chair had floated out of the lobby and into the pool area. Even though Earthman and Roger were really exhausted, they felt like they were really making a difference. But what Earthman didn't know was that while he and Roger were busy at the Sky Tower Hotel, Dr. D was making more trouble elsewhere. Dr. D now had control over the Laffy Taffy factory. He had caused the taffy making machine to go completely haywire. Every single person in the factory was now tangled in a giant sticky candy web of taffy. As soon as Earthman heard about this, he took off for the factory, but by now he was getting really tired. Earthman and Roger spent the next four hours chopping their way through miles and miles of Laffy Taffy, trying to set all the workers free. They were tired, hungry, and Earthman was starting to get a little cranky. He just couldn't seem to figure out why there was so much trouble in one day. But before he had a chance to get back and take a nap, he noticed that all the animals from the local zoo were running loose everywhere. Boy, were they happy to be free. Wild animals can throw quite a party when they get loose. Fortunately for Earthman, Roger realized that something was going on here. So while Earthman spent the rest of the day chasing monkeys, giraffes, and chickens, Roger decided to find a place to pray. He knew that if things kept going wrong all over town, Earthman would not be able to handle it all. Poor Earthman. He looked like he had just finished hiking to the top of a mountain after wrestling a mountain goat. Actually, he did have to wrestle a mountain goat one that wasn't very happy about getting into a cage. Things continued to go wrong all over town. Earthman was getting so many calls that he couldn't keep up with them, and he was having a really hard time catching the ostriches. They're pretty slippery for birds. 
So Roger began to pray. He prayed for Earthman and himself. He prayed for the animals. He prayed for the zookeepers and the visitors. And he prayed for all the people in Letzerville. Lord, said Roger, we don't know what to do. The people of this town need your help. Just then, Roger heard a big crash of thunder and saw lightning flash across the sky. Immediately, the calls stopped coming in. No more awful things were happening around town. Once everything was cleaned up and back to normal, Earthman was back on TV being congratulated for a job well done. Even Roger was proud of his hero. But what no one realized was that across town the evil Dr. Diabolico was on the floor of his secret lab, kicking and screaming and crying like a baby. Why? Because his new computer and the awful Hackintosh 3000 program had been mysteriously destroyed by lightning, and it hadn't even been raining. That was today's life story. Yeah, so his, in today's life story, Dr. Diabolico's machine was destroyed by a lightning. Now, did Roger pray for himself, or who did he pray for? Pray for everybody, and that was what our lesson was today, is that we can pray for others for God to meet not only our needs, but their needs as well. So I'm going to pray over you guys, because we're praying for others, and as our, uh, as our adult leaders break off into their boy and girl small groups and get ready for you guys, I'm going to pray over y'all. So, slap your hands together. Uh, let's do that a little bit better, because I want to hear a big slap, like, like a big slap. You ready? All right, slap your hands together, bow your eyes, and close your head. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for an awesome time of learning, Lord, that you provide us our daily bread. Not just ours, but everybody's, meaning that you provide for every single day's needs, our food, our clothing, our shelter, our friendship, our love. God, thank you for who you are. You are such a good, good father. And Lord, as we break off into our small groups, Lord, I pray that we would keep our hearts open and our ears open to listen to what our leaders have to say and share with us about praying for the needs of others. And Lord, thank you for prayer once more, that we get to talk to you no matter where we're at and no matter what it is about, that you hear us and that you answer us. In Jesus' name, and everybody says... Amen. All right, so the girls jump over here and the boys jump over here.